Autism as a subject can be a very hit or miss topic in films. Sometimes movies depict people with autism as furniture or as immeasurable burdens on their families. Other times you can find stories that depict autism in an endearing light and you wish there's more like it. Welcome to Autism Answers. Our mission is to provide you with informative facts about autism that are easy to digest as well as help broaden perspective regarding autism. In this video we'll discuss the movie Please Stand By. With that out of the way, let's get started. We were able to see the movie Please Stand By in which Dakota Fanning played a young autistic woman. The movie was both heartwarming and demonstrated how someone with ASD can maintain autonomy and life goals despite the hurdles they face. This month we'll be reviewing Please Stand By and talking about concepts and tidbits we found to be thought-provoking during the screening. Before we discuss this film, we want to highlight how rare it is for autistic women to be the focus of the medium. Anyone can be autistic and gender does not prelude the condition. It is, however, very common for women to be underrepresented in the media when it comes to ASD. So up to this will continue to change and women on the spectrum will become more prominent in the future. The film begins with a shot of a sci-fi desert and a voiceover describing characters we all recognize. Dakota Fanning narrates an adventure featuring a character we'll soon recognize as Wendy. We learn from the beginning that Wendy lives in a group home away from her family, and Scotty, her caregiver, works with her to plan her itinerary. As Wendy works at Cinnabon and uses her extensive knowledge of Star Trek to win bets with her friends, the film humanizes autism by showing the audience that Wendy has a life and is doing her best despite her limitations. It begins with Wendy demonstrating her struggles in a variety of situations, with her therapist caregiver Scotty, who believes that Wendy is making significant progress, with her sister Audrey, who's still apprehensive about Wendy's sudden rages, and with her colleagues at Cinnabon, tentatively. As Wendy's sister Audrey informs her that she'll be visiting, things take a turn for the worse. Audrey is Wendy's primary family member since her mother passed away some time ago. The context clues suggest Wendy lived at a home until her mother passed away and then transitioned to a group home. But what happens on the day of the visit does not go as Audrey had expected. There is an emotional episode between Wendy and Audrey, and Audrey leaves in a huff after Wendy asks her to visit her niece. This scene bothered many for a variety of reasons. Why hasn't the sister checked in with Scotty the caregiver to see how Wendy is doing and what skills she's learning along the way? Second, there are scenes that relate to Wendy and Audrey's childhood. Audrey has emotional holdovers from past events, but she refuses to allow growth to reshape the relationship. Many people think the important lesson from this interaction is that you need to be able to communicate with someone so that you are on the same page. Due to Audrey's absence, she was unable to respect Wendy's growth and change during her recovery journey. The overarching plot, Wendy worked tirelessly on her script, but waited until just a few days to send it in. When she mailed it in, she realized it wouldn't go there in time because of a holiday. At that point, the idea of visiting Paramount Pictures solidifies and the movie begins to take off. This was the beginning of many misfortunes for Wendy, the first of which involved a small dog she was unable to prevent from following her out of her bedroom window at dawn. There are robberies and sensitive civil servants and other mishaps. The trip highlights Wendy's intelligence and ingenuity. Please Stand By is a sensitive character study whose story beats are a little bit familiar, to be honest. Dakota Fanning is as excellent as Wendy. Fanning uses her arms to convey the character's social awkwardness, often flailing them as if battling off unseen demons. As the former child star has grown up to rangy proportions, Scotty is compassionate, while Audrey is confused and helpless in Alice Eve. Tony Collette plays Scotty with determination. During the final third, the movie becomes more engaging, largely because Patton Oswalt plays a cop who knows how to get Wendy to listen to him when she's on the run. In a plausible but potentially crowd-pleasing scene at the end, Wendy asserts herself in a more or less socially acceptable manner. Even in its most commonplace moments, Please Stand By is palatable thanks to director Ben Lewin's ability to let performers do their best work. During times of high stress, Wendy, a young woman on the autism spectrum, repeats this phrase to herself. It's been taught to her by Scotty, a therapist at the group home, where she and others live. As part of Scotty's training, Wendy also learns how to make eye contact, read social cues on people's faces, and smile in the shower. Before we continue, we'd like to ask a few moments of your time. If you want to support us and our mission to spread awareness about autism, please leave a like and click on the subscribe button. This would help us create more engaging content for you. Now moving back to where we left off. Wendy's obsession with Star Trek, particularly Mr. Spock, is one aspect of Wendy's imaginative life on which Scotty has no impact. In preparation for a Paramount Pictures writing contest, Wendy has been writing a Star Trek script, which currently runs over 400 pages long. There are many references to how Spock tries to find scientific equation to explain humor in order to become more human. Spock's internal tension is captured not just by Wendy's idea, but also the fascination so many people on the spectrum have with the Vulcan first officer. Although Spock was raised in a culture that identifies emotions as weak and untrustworthy, he's able to suppress his own emotions because his mother was human. You forget, Doctor, I'm Vulcan. I have no feelings to hurt, he tells McCoy in Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, but he's lying both to himself and to McCoy. 
Wendy, on the other hand, does not seem as far along. Her robotic appearance conceals a lot of emotions that can run wild. She often says, please stand by, please stand by, please stand by, in response to her older sister Audrey, who is so wary of Wendy that Audrey won't let Wendy hold Audrey's one-year-old daughter. You can tell from the above that Please Stand By is thoughtful in the way it dramatizes autism's consequences. However, the film isn't that great. You know how most of its sequences play out before they even come to them. The film has a circumstance sanitized quality, as it were made for group homes without causing unnecessary upset. When Annie realizes that the mall isn't going to deliver her Star Trek script to Paramount by the deadline, she escapes from her home and makes an inept trip to Los Angeles. It's not easy for someone who doesn't understand the real world, and she's treated awfully by everyone from bus station attendants to mailroom attendants. Michael Gamco gives her a couple of excellent moments, though when she proves to be cleverer than we expected. Dakota Fanning's performance is hard to assess. She keeps her eyes fixed, speaks in a monotone manner, and appears unnatural. But of course, people at this level of the spectrum are prone to seem unnatural. So she's probably very good. Even though Colette could play Scotty in her sleep, she remains awake and shows conviction. It's also a jury part for Alice Eve, but she's sure to get a reaction from Trekkies. She played a scene in her undies in the first Star Trek feature, which upset some fans. One of my favorite scenes features Pat Oswald as a cop who demonstrates his ability to speak a foreign tongue with guttural exhortions. I like the idea of a cop who's less concerned with tasers than phasers. Many have seen and recommended Please Stand By as one of the best autism films in the movie. Wendy is the center of the story and is not sidetracked by another narrative. Autism struggles are humanized in the movie. Some people have some issues with Audrey's characterization, but most think that this is a great movie. It's rare to see women on the spectrum front and center like this, and hopefully this will change, and we will have the diverse narratives we need and deserve. And that's what we have for you today. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comment section down below. If you want more content related to this topic, make sure to check out our channel. Take care, and we'll see you in the next video.